Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make a mushroom soup. This recipe is also a brilliant template for soups in general. So, what I've got, first off actually, I've just taken on this tray some dried sep mushrooms and some dried shiitakes. The reason for the dried shiitakes is they have an awful lot of something called umami, which is a, gives a, it's, it's a particular taste and gives a really big mouthfeel. This soup recipe for me is a real kind of real comfort, nostalgic memories. It's like a posh, posh tin of soup. But using the Boss blender, a whole thing becomes incredibly easy and you'll be amazed at the result. So I've dried these in the oven, then let them cool down, and then with the blender, I've just blitzed them into a powder. So this powdered mushroom we're going to finish our soup with. You can play around with drying different mushrooms, from button mushrooms to um, either the black trompettes or, as I said, shiitakes work really well. Okay, so I've just put this pan on a heat, low to medium heat. Into the pan, I'm going to stick some butter. I'm fairly generous with the butter. Again, this soup is all about kind of comfort and nostalgia. So, adding to the butter, I've got some onions, relatively thinly sliced, and some slices of potato. The reason for the potatoes, this is basically going to be the thickening agent for the soup. I've washed the excess starch off the potato. And I'm going to leave the onions, onions and potatoes for about five minutes or so for sweating, sweating them off. Now the important thing here with this soup, if you're going to make a vegetable soup and you want to preserve the freshness of that vegetable, it's important to cook it as quickly as possible. Um, obviously the onions and potatoes can have a longer cook because they don't need that freshness preserving. But for me I want to try and capture the fragrance from these button mushrooms. I think they're one of the most underrated mushrooms. We automatically go for things like morels and seps and all the expensive wild variety, but a closed cap button mushroom has a real fragrance to it. Uh, but it, it really needs very sort of relatively brief cooking. So you'll notice that all the vegetables here have been sliced pretty thinly, so they won't take too long to cook. Okay, so now these have had a good five minutes. Just take them to the point where they're softening, but not you don't want any coloration on the onions or the potatoes. Potatoes need to be soft enough, but bear in mind, from now to finishing the soup, it's only going to be about 10 to 15 minutes maximum. So those potatoes need to be soft enough to puree and keep the soup smooth. So to that, I'm going to add these sliced button mushrooms. And now you can actually, you can actually turn the heat up because there's a lot of water in these mushrooms. It looks like a lot, but you'll see very, very quickly they'll start to, start to break down. And what we're looking for here is a really kind of perfumed fragrance coming from the mushrooms. To that, I'm going to add some thinly sliced leeks. Again, I didn't put the leeks in with the onions because I wanted to preserve the freshness of the leeks. I want the leeks to be cooked enough so they can be puree smooth, but just to preserve that fragrance. So this won't need that long. I'd give them maybe another three, four minutes. Now the pan's gone quite dry. The butter's being absorbed by all of the vegetables in here. And keep smelling. I think it's when you cook, it's really important. Smell, use your senses in the kitchen. And a lot of cooks at home, they'll follow a recipe, but they don't smell and they don't taste. You just think about what you want out of the dish. Right, that's, about, that's about right. We've got that really nice fragrance. You can smell when, the, when you've got that sort of kind of raw onion note has gone, there's, there's a bit of sweetness that's come through. So now I'm going to add a little bit of vermouth. Um, this is just going to add a little bit of acidity, but also this really sort of sweet fragrance that works so well with onions, mushrooms and butter. Doesn't really need much reducing, just a, just a little bit. I'm going to pour in some uh, vegetable stock. What I've done is I put the stock in the pan and I've had it simmering. And the reason for that is if I was going to pour the cold stock in, 
but then have to heat it up to get it to a simmer, and that's going to take longer. And this is all about reducing the cooking time. We want this to cook as quickly as possible whilst having all of the ingredients and vegetables in there pureable. So the cooks are nice, it stays nice and smooth. Okay, so that's now had about 10 minutes. Still really, it's really fragrant. You can get the, the, the onions and the mushrooms coming through beautifully. So, last couple of things to add is a drop of milk and some cream. You want this soup to have some, some creaminess, but whenever you're adding cream to soups or sauces, very important just to cook it out for maybe up to five minutes, and you'll smell the difference. If you don't cook it out, you do get that raw, fatty, creamy note. So just by cooking the cream out for, say, five minutes, you'll soften that and integrate it nicely into the soup. You'll still get that nice, velvety, creamy texture. So that is basically ready to go. Okay, so now I'll take the lid of the boss off. And to puree this, so I'm just going to use a jug. Now, I wouldn't generally advise putting very hot liquid with hot solid things in it into a liquidizer. Because if you're not careful when you hit blend, you're basically going to create Vesuvius. It'll be the world's first mushroom and onion Vesuvius, laced with napalm. That'll just <laughs> straight up. Normally what goes up has to come down, so it's not a very pretty sight. But the great thing with this blender is it's exactly what you can do. So this, I'll do this in a couple of batches. Head on. Now, on setting wise, I'm going to stick this on puree. And let me just check the consistency of this. Yeah, that's nice and smooth. Now, just before the last setting, what I'm going to do, I want to season this soup. Now, one of the biggest differences, I think, between the professional chef and the home cook is the way that they season the food. For me, uh, this little bowl here contains the most important ingredient in the kitchen. The salt, in terms of what it does to the taste and the flavour of food, and what it does to curing, brining, what it does to chocolates, biscuits, um, it's invaluable. You need to know how to use it properly. So from a seasoning point of view, this, this is a really good example of a little experiment you can do thinking about tasting and what level of seasoning is right. So I'll take a little bowl and a ladle, just ladle a little bit of this soup out. Taste the soup. So it definitely needs salt. So add a bit of salt. Obviously don't put too much in to begin with. Just stir it to dissolve, dissolve the salt. Taste it. That's good. Um, I know that's the right level, but that's, that's what I do. But uh, adding salt, if you're doing this, you can think, okay, that's now that's the, the flavors expand, the taste is, the, the mouthfeel of this soup, it's changed everything. It's fantastic. Once you've got that right, you've got this as a benchmark, go back to the soup in here, and that, then just add the right amount of salt. Um, some pepper. Pepper's different. Pepper's more of a flavour than a seasoning, although we do call it a seasoning. It's just salt completely changes the depth of a dish. Really does. So last thing, I'm going to crank this up to the top setting, which is mill. I just want to aerate, aerate the soup a little bit. Just create a few bubbles, which will really lighten the soup and give it a really nice texture. The other thing with this, which is... Fabulous for the home cook. Us chefs, we love sieves. We just love them. We'll use them at any opportunity. Pass them through a sieve. But we have, we have armies of people to wash up for us. So we become very messy and very lazy. At home, that's a pain in the butt. But with this, because the motor and the blades are so powerful, and the nature of the blades themselves, you really don't have to pass through a sieve. 
Unless you want it, of course. So. Right, so that is it. Let's pour the soup into the bowl. And you can see the texture. It's really beautifully creamy. A real kind of comfort, comfort zone food, uh, but with finesse to it as well. I'm going to finish it off just by sp sprinkling over mushroom powder. That's it. It's a mushroom soup made in a Boss blender. It takes me so straight back, straight back to childhood. Although canned soup never tasted like this.